Okay, so it's time to make a spoon. This is the second part in this um, dinner scene series. So we've already, in the first video, we've created our fork. Now, if you go to the outliner, and to access the outliner, you just go to Windows and click Outliner. And what we want to do is we've made the fork and now we want to make the spoon. So what I'm going to do is delete the image planes which are in here because we don't need them anymore. Okay. And then I've got, a, it says P cube, poly cube, because remember we started in the last lesson, we started making this fork with a cube. So what I'm going to do is rename this. So just double click and I'm going to call this fork. And what we can do is select that and hit Control H. And what that's done is it's now hidden the fork. Um, Shift H to unhide it. So we're going to hide that. Now we need to set up our, our sort of image planes for modeling the spoon. So let's hit space and go back to our four views. Let's go to the top, let's scroll out and Alt middle mouse button. And there we go. Right, so let's go to view, image plane, import image. And then if you've got all these images and link them into your source images file, you will now have these images. So let's go top view of the spoon and click open. So remember these units are centimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters long. I think I want that a bit larger. So let's select the image plane, get our scale tool, and I'm gonna scale it up. So it's now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 14, so let's go eight. And yeah, about nine units and then by here and then it'll be nine units there, so that's 18. So that's the um, top view of the spoon. And I'm now going to come into the, I think I'm gonna to go to the front. So I'm gonna to go to view, image plane, import image, and then spoon side view. Um, because working, if I click open, yeah, working on last time, I did it in the side X by here, but for some reason it was like rotated the wrong way, so I'm doing it from front. If you can't see front, all you need to do is panels, orthographic, and then front, side, top, okay? You just click front if you can't see it. Anyway, I'm gonna get this now. Let's have a look at my perspective view, lining this up properly. Um, so let's go a, bit, a little bit like that. I know I need to scale this up so it's got nine units each side because this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this one's got one, two, three, four. So let's zoom out and scale it from the center. So five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that's 18 units across, 18 centimeters in total. And you can now see that, yeah, the end's matching up there. And let's move this up and to there, yeah, and also let's move it back. So we've got these image planes set up now. So yeah, we've got the top view and the side view, so that's great. Now, in order to start modeling this, I'm gonna start from the top. Um, I'm gonna use my top and my perspective view for the most part for this. I, I want to get this little sort of bowl shape, so I'm gonna start with a sphere. So if I click sphere, it'll just makes a sphere, and I can now move this to the center, and let's also move it up in the perspective view. What I wanna do is in the perspective view, I'm gonna come in, or I can even do it from this, from this front view by here actually, maybe a bit easier. So let's zoom in and click and drag across. What I wanna do is I wanna to go to face mode, and I'm gonna click and drag, and I'm gonna delete the top half of, half of the faces. So I've selected the top, top ones like that. So just click off, go to face mode, and I think, yeah, those ones. I'm gonna delete the top half. So select them, they're all orange, hit delete. And what you'll notice in the perspective view is we've got this weird dark, if we just go back to object mode and click off, we've got this dark interior, and that's just something to do with the, with the normals. And I'm not gonna go into that at this basic level. What we wanna do is, let's now look at the top view. In fact, I'm gonna full screen the top view by hitting spacebar with my mouse over it. We now wanna use the scale to scale it to fit this. So if we hit R on the keyboard or just hit scale on the side, I'm now gonna start scaling it out uniformly, but also, don't worry that it's doing that. Basically, the reason, what's going on there is if we come back out, when I'm scaling it, it's actually going through the bottom so that it starts in this top view it's showing us the image plane because it's actually scaling to the point where it's getting bigger and cutting through so don't worry about that don't let it confuse you what i'm going to do is my spoon is definitely too deep so i am going to just 
bring it down like that and make it shallower. Um, anyway, back in this view, let's now use this scale, scale it down and outwards now to get something similar. Let's pull it forwards a bit and scale it outwards just a touch more. And we've now got our basic spoon shape. Um, so what we can do is look in this view now, maybe make it a touch deeper, but also let's move it down and also E for rotate. Let's rotate it so it matches up, okay? And maybe scale it a touch more, move it up with W and yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not matching perfectly, but for, for, for the most part, this is kind of what we want. Um, you can always go ahead and sort of like pull these vertexes down and use the soft select. I'm not going to go into that because this is a very beginner's kind of course. Um, but look, we've got, um, let's just go back to object mode. We've got this kind of more or less matched up. Um, so yeah, cool. Now what I want to do is I want to select all of my faces. So come in, go to face mode by right clicking face and select all of them. And I want to go control E, which is extrude or maybe command E on a Mac, control E. And you can see I've got this little window. So let's go full screen. I've got this little window here and you've got something called thickness. So if I just click and drag, I'm now going to just pull the thickness to about 0. Point, I think 0. 0.1. And what it does is it solves that issue with the inside being black, okay? So we've now, before we just had a single surface, it was almost paper thin, and there was no actual thickness to it. So in fact, I may go 0 0.05, and it basically gives it some sort of geometry and some level of thickness, okay? So I'm just going to click off, and that's fine. We now want to make the handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two faces by here i think let's zoom in yeah we'll have a bit of a wide kind of handle at first but don't worry these two faces and again i'm going to go Control e to extrude and in the previous lesson when we were making the fork we pulled out and you can see it just gets really kind of wild if we do that it just gets really wide really fast so what i'm going to do is this little icon up here looks like a power button if you click that it now recenters this, okay? And now what we can do is get this red handle and pull out, and it's gonna keep it uniform all the way. Okay, it's a little bit thick at the moment, but don't worry. So in this view, let's come out and pull it all the way back. And there we go. So I can just click off and we've got our handle. Now, we also, our handle has got different thickness throughout, but actually we can't see that. So what we can do is come to object mode, then right click the object, come to material attributes, and it's got a Lambert on there, pretty standard. Turn the transparency down, and we can now actually see the image plane through this. So what we did last time is we actually added in edges by here, and we're gonna do the same again. So mesh tool, and you've got insert edge loop. And we can click and create our own, but I actually don't wanna do that. I wanna to come to mesh tools and click this option box. And what you'll get is options for this tool. And what you can do is say multiple edge loops. So I want to do multiple ones. So click that. And let's say I want five. What I can do now is come into here, click. I can't click and drag, but I now just click once and it's put five edge loops in there at differing, at equal distances. Okay. Or you can just click back and you can just to relative distance from edge and you can just um go right, I can click and drag and put it where I want. I may put an extra one by here. Okay, so I've got them. What I can do now is go into the vertex mode and let's, from the view above, let's right click, vertex, select them. Why isn't that selecting? Uh, now the reason that isn't selecting is because I need to go back to my selection tool. It's still in, it's still got the insert edge loop tool. So just click back on this little arrow and now I can click and select these. What I want to do is I want to get my scale, so that's R, and I just want to scale these outwardly. Again, don't scale from the middle because it's also um, going to scale the sort of, um, if you scale it from the middle, it's going to scale them up and down. So if I, you can see it also makes it thicker by there. So I'm going to undo what I did there. So basically you just want to scale them outwards like that. So let's jump straight back in and I'm going to do that all the way down. So get these, scale them kind of like outwards, get these, scale them outwards. 
Now, one thing I don't like, I don't like the fact that these lines are at an angle, a little bit of a V. So what you can do with these selected is scale that way and it basically flattens out that line. You don't have to, but if I was UV mapping this, I wouldn't like it. I want them to all be straight. Um, so basically selects those points and just scales them in the um, X, just like that. And now you can just go and take the shape of this handle. Um, so Alt, click and drag and do this all the way down. And there we go. So pull it in and yeah. Now, what you can do, we've got a little bit of a wide kind of thing by here. So you can do a few things. You can put in a little insert edge loop by here and, you know, go back to the selection tool, vertex mode and get these scale. Make sure you don't select any other ones and go something like that. And I think actually that's what I'm going to do. You could potentially come into the... Um, perspective view and you could zoom in and you could look at try oh it's gone a bit mad you could potentially look at trying to bring some of these points it gets a little bit tricky to select them don't necessarily do this but what you could have done is have a look at bringing these points inwards a bit you know that that and something like maybe that um, but to be honest, I'm happy with how it looks. So now what I want to do is we've nearly got our spoon done. Let's just hit spacebar and come to this view. So we're just looking from the side. Let's now go to vertexes and let's move these up. Let's move these up like this. So I'm going to align. You can see there's that sort of shine line going down. I'm going to align the top line of my model to that. Okay, just like this. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit rough. We'll be smoothing it out. Don't worry. Um, and go like that. And just keep on doing this all the way down. And then we've only got one or two quick things that we want to do. Um, I think what I'm going to do is be careful when you're selecting these ones by here. Um, I'm going to move them up like that basically, but be careful because if you're from doing it from quite a way out, you may accidentally select some of these other ones and it just gets mental. So don't be careful of that. Zoom in. I'm going to get these just to kind of get this nice little curvature and bring it back a touch, I think as well. And let's see how that looks in our other views. That's looking fine from there. What I do want to do is look at the back. It's quite thick up here, so I'm going to get these vertexes and I'm going to scale them, hit R, I'm going to scale them outwards to make it a little bit thicker at the back. Same for these. And same for that. Move it down just a touch. So it's basically thicker at the handle. Um, and yeah, you kind of get what I'm doing. Maybe make it a little bit thicker by here. I do want it to get thinner as we go down. There we go. Let's make that a little bit thicker. And yeah, as we come down, I want it to just sort of thin out. So I'm gonna leave this stuff by here. So let's kind of have a look at our final spoon now. So if we right click, go back to object mode, right click and go to material attributes and, oh, I didn't show me that, material attributes. There you go, Lambert. And go back to take transparency down. And now we've got our spoon. What we do wanna do is we want to, let's go full view in here we want to smooth this. So hit three on your keyboard with it selected. And there you go. You now have a lovely looking spoon. So that's, that's it for this little lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna move on to making the knife. Before we do that, let's delete our image planes in the outliner, so Windows outliner. I'm gonna rename this to spoon. And I'm also gonna hit Control H and it'll hide it. I can select both the fork and the spoon, shift H, and they're both back in here, but I'm going to hide them for now because in the next lesson, we're going to look at creating the table knife. <laughs>